welcome to Pearls of Liberty. We're doing a special edition today to explain a little bit about Georgia's economy and specifically land use under that proposed system or theoretical system. Don has done some extensive study into this uh, economical theory and finds a lot of value in it and we've been having discussions between ourselves about land use because the ideas for land use under this proposed system or theoretical system are unique to the Western way of thinking. I can't say they're unique to the American way of thinking because they are very much in alignment with Native American thinking about land, but Don will explain. And actually with biblical thinking about land use too, as uh, Cindy has been pointing out, but I've, I've heard that feedback from other people too. One of the things, if, when we step back and we take a look at what the, the whole idea of private property means, the first thing we tend to think of when we think of private property is owning land. But that isn't really the same as any other property. And a lot of classical thinkers, they recognize that. Today the distinctions have become blurred, and I want to help make them clear again. The anything that, and, and I've been reading um, Henry George's work, Pro Poverty and Progress, and it, there's some really deep thinking about the sources of our economic foundation and what land has to do with that. Anything that, what can you own? What, what can you justly own that you can say, this is mine? What gives you that right? Well, it's anything that you created. You, you got something that you had, that you were entitled to, that it was available to you, and you made something from it. Or it wasn't even necessarily raw materials, but or you purchased something that was offered by somebody else that became yours and then you made it into something. You added value to it and then you sold it or you used it to enhance your life in one way or another. What that, you can't say that though about land. You didn't create the land, you didn't make the flowing stream, you didn't create the mountain, you didn't create the rain that fell out of the sky. These are gifts from God. And Native Americans understand this, and they think it's so strange that the white man thinks that he can own land. Well, there needs to be some kind of stewardship principle where you care for the land, but you can't really own it. And if you think through what the root cause of the way that humans are able to enslave other humans, it all goes back to the land because in order to produce anything you need a place to produce it and then you need a, a labor force to produce more of it and that requires that people be on land and once people are on land that they don't that they where they have to where somebody else controls it then they pay rent so really rent is the price of the monopoly of land and if you know today what the, the true status of property is, real estate is really royal estate and it really all goes back to the crown and you on your uh, mortgage document are listed as a tenant. You don't own the land. People think they own property, they don't. Why are you paying property taxes? That's really your rent. That is, if you don't pay your property taxes, you get kicked off of it. Doesn't that prove you don't really own it? So what I'm talking about is not really a taking away any right to own land. It's giving us our right back, but in a proper perspective. And the, one of the best ways that the, the ideas of Henry George are put into practice is the land value tax or the single tax and these ideas were quite popular around of the turn of the century right before World War II and it was largely all the turmoil of world I mean sorry World War One that caused 
these ideas to recede back into the of secondary importance and we need to get back to that point before these world wars disrupted the true understanding of humanity about how to live and thrive in a creative environment where there were new inventions the industrial age henry george asked the question in the midst of this industrial revolution why is there so much poverty in the midst of so much creativity and progress? And the answer goes back to the misuse of land. So when you have a, uh, a limited amount of land that, that humans can call theirs, and then anything above and beyond that, that goes to they have to pay the right to have that to the community, the right to use that and to develop that, then the community itself is the, the true owner of the land. It's not a bank, it's not somebody that you have to pay money to, it's the, the community of people as a whole. So this is the concept that we need to figure out how to implement into our thinking we need to get back to being on the land because that's our true source of wealth, creativity, productivity, our grounding as human beings comes from the land. We need to be able to develop a, a legal system, a structure that says that if you are hogging more then you have to pay for the use of that to the community. And it's actually a great example of the way that that can be used to develop a, the community is what happened in California with the development of all of the water projects uh, shortly after the, the turn of the, 19, in the early 1900s. Though those were Henry George's ideas in action. There, there was tax for owning a great deal of land and that the proceeds from those, that taxation system went into the development of water projects which turned California into the great ag agricultural productive land that it is today. And what is, what is now shutting that down is the shutting off of the water due to the federal lake regulations that are supposed to be protecting some endangered species of smelt or something. So that is the way to unleash creativity is to pool resources when humans are using more than what they need. And I'm not talking about an income tax, that's very different. This is a single tax, this is a tax on the amount of land that somebody is claiming title to. So that's probably enough for a taste of Henry George's uses uh, the, the single value land tax, the, the whole foundation of land as being the, the shared value that of a community. For more information you can go to the savingcommunities.org which is a great work that's being done by Dan Sullivan and his group that is actually implementing these policies to help communities revitalize themselves in difficult economic times. These are very effective ideas but they take a, a while to grasp and it kind of rubs against the grain of the ability, the, the, the whole idea of private property. When you talk about land being shared by a community sounds a lot like communism but really it actually enables you to, tr to rightly value property because you're not claiming something is yours when you didn't create it. So when you, when you draw the proper distinction between what you created and actually produced and what you didn't, then that actually enhances the ability of humans to truly have private property because it is what you created, not what you laid claim to or what is really a gift from God to all men.
And just to tie in the, the biblical model, the Old Testament, the way the historical Israel, I'm not talking about modern Israel, I'm talking about when the people went through the wilderness from Egypt to Canaan and settled there. There were there was a very specific law that governed from handed down from God through Moses that governed the use of land. And land was given to a tribe, which was a network of families basically. It was a group of people who all were descended from the same uh, of one of twelve brothers. So there were twelve tribes in Israel. They each except with the exception of one who was the priest class were all given their own territory and the priest class was given homes within the city but the priest class wasn't intended to work the land agriculturally and that's a whole different story that we don't need to get into right now but the 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 idea is that land was given to a very large family called a tribe and that tribe administered everything within that the scope of where that land was that land could not be bought or sold that land could be transferred for a certain period of time but every 49 years the land would revert back to its its original owner so that was a kind of a unique it was it was an agricultural system but it, it was in in some respects the, a very similar system to what Don is referring to and allowed for people to have a place where they felt very safe and very secure and had the ability to develop their culture and to thrive in their community. Right, so may you find your tribe and inherit your land. That's the source of all true blessing and that's what we wish for you.